Hello, everyone. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, yeah. wherever you are coming Konnichiwa. from. Konnichiwa. Hola. Uh, good day. Uh, we're excited Some to be time. back. It's been too long. It has. We, yeah. uh, Way too long. We have no excuses. We no, were going to do one of up. these live from London back in June, was that? Yeah, was that in June? June. We we're going to do it live. We were just in Las Vegas. A few of us from the team were in Las Vegas last week at a Microsoft conference. We we're going to do it there. Uh, but we're finally doing it now. Don't worry, we have tons to share. Excited to be here. This is the Logic Apps Live webcast. Whoop, whoop. We are joined today uh, by myself. So I'm Jeff Holland, a program manager on the Logic Apps team. I'm Kevin Lamb, another program manager on Logic Apps. <laughs> and I'm John Fancy, another project <laughs> program manager on the team. And we, today is not just any webcast. Today is July 26th, but in some places of the world, it's July 27th. It's July 27th. Yeah. So which means it's it. someone's birthday today. Logic Apps, yay! <laughs> so we have cupcakes. We brought enough for everybody here. Uh, here. There you go. Yeah, everyone here. <laughs> Not you watching, uh, unfortunately, but mm, that's good. Uh, so a year ago on July 27th, Logic Apps became generally available. Uh, so we're excited to celebrate that. It's yeah. come a long way. It has come a long it's way. It's crazy. Even if you just look at the deck from today, where it's come in the last two months is uh, pretty astounding. Crazy. Yeah. So, uh, all right, with that, uh, feel free to chime in on chat uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can tweet us at LogicApps.io if you're watching the recording, or you just want to use Twitter. Uh, we will be monitoring those comments. And thanks, everyone, for the congrats and the birthday cake emoji, uh, Daniel. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an emoji that you could use in YouTube, but I'm not as hip as my wife, I guess. So with that, Kevin, All right. uh, we will Let's switch over to uh, your presentation. You got it. There we yeah, go. Logic Apps. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about because we missed last month's webcast. So we're going to double up on this one. But the first thing we're going to talk about is yeah. your hackathon. So this is a, actually a really unique opportunity. Uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody had the chance to know about it. We've never done something like this before, and this is almost like a test run. And if it goes well, we want to do it a lot more places. Uh, but in New York, uh, downtown New York, and like Times Square Microsoft office, on September 5th, we're actually going to have a bunch of people from our team here at Microsoft fly out to New York. Uh, and they're going to be running a hands-on hack fest focused on uh, Azure Functions, Azure Logic Apps, Azure App Services, some API management. Uh, but really, it's it's all about Logic Apps. Of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the most important thing in there. Uh, but it's actually very small. Uh, so the purpose of this is to give some hands-on training and as well as have some time, like the second and third day, to do some workshop work where you can code right alongside uh, our team to build a solution, whatever you want to work on. If it's a proof of concept, if it's some hackathon idea that you have, whatever. Uh, but we really want to make sure that we're giving the attention to people who come. So spots are very, very, very limited. Uh, so if you're watching this webcast, you have a unique opportunity to let us know you're interested. Uh, send us a tweet, a DM. You can send a direct message to the Logic Apps IO account. You can send us an email, logicappsemail at microsoft.com. Let us know uh, if you're going to be in or around New York on September 5th, uh, 6th, 7th, 8th, anytime that week and we'll make sure we reserve one of those exclusive spots. So we're excited to try this out. And like I said, if it goes well, this is something we want to do in more locations. Uh, so spread the word if you know of anyone who might be interested. So with that, that's right. my spiel, Kevin. Excellent. Back to Logic Apps, what's new, what's, new? what's coming, and questions. All right. What's new? Oh, OK, you ready? <laughs> Catch your breath. It's going to be a big one. Export Logic App in Visual Studio. So um, you know, we released this probably about fifty days ago, but uh, you know, in in some worlds that's actually not that long ago. Uh, but now in Visual Studio, you can there's a button. If you go ahead and open a Logic App from Cloud Explorer, you can uh, export that Logic App. It will actually create a file on your local file system of the Logic App as an ARM template. Then you can import that into your uh, your Visual Studio project and then party on that. So it's a really great way to to parameterize and uh, get your Logic App uh, from uh, uh, from the live uh, production and then into Visual Studio, and then you can start working in Visual Studio against your Logic Apps. OK. Next. So now we can, uh, you're able to have webhooks in a for each loop. Uh, before, you can, of course, you can have a webhook anywhere in your Logic App, but it was constrained before. And so now you can have lots and lots of webhooks in your, in your for each. 
So that that's now enabled. So you can do approval scenarios, for example. Yeah, you like you may not be familiar with using the webhook step in a 4-H, but uh, we use webhooks for things like send an approval email, where we'll just hang out and wait for a long time for you to send a signal back through a webhook. Uh, before you couldn't do that in a 4-H, so now you could say, you know, for each one of these approvers, send them an approval email and wait for each of them to reply back. Great, great. Some nice scenarios. Service principles. Ah, live now in production. This yeah. is great. Uh, so if you are using things like a resource template, you may be aware one of the challenges with some of our OAuth-based connectors is we require you to consent. You have to sign in and say, I allow Logic Apps to use my uh, connection details. Uh, this was a challenging for like headless deployments or if you're using Data Lake and you want to use a different tenant than your home tenant. Uh, anyway, now in the designer, when you create a connection to Azure Resource Manager or Data Lake, you can say connect with an Azure application uh, service principle. And this lets you provide a secret that has permission to your application and you can do it all headless. It's an application that you're giving permission to, not a user. Uh, so, you know, if, if you know, your developer left the company, your credentials would live on uh, if you do this application. We've just started it. So right now it's with uh, Azure Resource Manager and Azure Data Lake. Uh, it will be rolling out in the next few weeks to Office 365 connectors, Dynamics connectors, and SharePoint connectors. Um, so we just got word that some of those bits finished deploying and we'll light them up very soon. Sweet. Headless auth, awesome. Array handling the designer. Do you ever have one of those scenarios where you had uh, your output from from one of your steps and you wanted to input the actual array instead of having it interpret it for you? Now we're able to, to better handle that in the designer. So you can actually pass in the whole array object instead of the, the elements themselves. Yep. The form that I hear this in the most common is how do I send multiple email attachments on yeah. the send email yeah. step? Because uh, attachments is an array. And now you can do it. It's we still want to improve it, but it's possible now. <laughs> All incremental improvement. Batch processing. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I cool. showed this off uh, at Integrate uh, last month. Um, so this is a new feature that allows you to uh, group things together arbitrarily. You can even provide a, a sort of partition key. So you can create a batch. Um, and the way this works is with a batch trigger on the receiving uh, logic app. And you can set the number of items you want to trigger off of in that batch. Um, and then have a you know one or more sending logic apps that sends to that batch, provides a key so you can group by that key. Um, and every single time it hits that limit that you specify in the trigger, it will fire the second logic app and do the work and receives an array. So great array support that we've just added will help with that as well to be able to then process all the items in that batch. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more later about what else we're doing in batching as well. Yeah, so, it's covered. Yeah. It's very cool functionality, though. Uh, it's super easy to use. I think yeah. that's the thing I like the most about it. So if you haven't tried it out, give it a go. Serious. Um, yeah, it solves a lot of scenarios. I, 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 this is one of those things where you like see the name and you're like batch processing. Like, what is yeah. this tape drive stuff? Like, what are we doing? But it's like, uh, it's uh, like I was on a call the other week and someone was processing heaps of data, and they wanted to push it through cognitive services. But cognitive services, the service yeah. limits you to only send you know a couple requests a second. And they were like, well, what do we do? Like, do we have to go put these all in a database and then periodically flush it? We're like, no, just drop in a batch step. Yeah. And so they got all this data real time and they would just batch it up. And then once the batch was ready, they could process it and send one call to cognitive services to process all of it. Uh, and it just like it just works. Like yeah. you don't have to set up any database. You just say batch and set a trigger on the batch being full and, and you're done. Yeah. Variable decrement. So we keep on improving variables. So we released variables some time ago. Now you can decrement an integer value in, in a variable. Variable support for more types. Mm -hmm. So before we only had integers. Uh, now we do integers, arrays, strings, floats, objects. So you can set a variable to any essentially any of our uh, built-in types. Run history compressed view. So now when you click on a, a um, run history item, the modern view will come up, but then you'll get a side blade, which is uh, kind of a compressed view of the full uh, run history blade, so that you can quickly go through, you know, all let's say all of your failed runs. You can quickly pick the the run that you care about, and that monitoring view will come up. So it's a nice way not to have to close windows and open them again as you go back to your your history view. 
there's more. Run API time range filter. So now you can, you can filter the runs based on a time range. So using the API, you can say I only want uh, runs between these two uh, date times. Great way to do uh, better monitoring in your custom work. Action config, we'll show this later. Um, now you can almost, I think everything, is that right, everything? I think anything that's configurable in action, now you can uh, actually do in the designer. Very close. We're very close We're to everything. Pretty, yeah. yeah. So split on, retry policy, timeout, setting the sequential flag, disable async polling, all that stuff's available in your action or trigger config settings. Um, you'll see that, you'll hit the dot, 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 and you'll see those options come up on the right. Yep. Pan and zoom in designer. You ever have a really big logic app and you want to get the whole view? Now you can pan and zoom. That's nice. Yay. Server-side paging. Ah, mm. this is a nice secret, you know, secret that we have. Um, <laughs> There's not so secret now. Not yeah. so secret anymore. <laughs> uh, SQL, for example, um, had a page size limit of 256 uh, rows in a, in a request. Mm -hmm. And so if, you're, if your query had more than 256 rows, you'd only get the first 256. And people didn't realize that. And they'd do tops, and the, you know, weird things would happen, and not the behavior they wanted. So now you can enable server-side paging where there's a config value that says enable paging. And we will actually go ahead and follow uh, the, the pages to continue getting the full set of the result value. So if you have 10,000 rows, we'll actually pull back 10,000 rows yep. uh, up to our limit that we can handle in any, any uh, logic app, which is 100,000 uh, entities. Yeah, um, and we're even probably going to bump that limit soon. Uh, the nice thing, too, with this is similar to batching, you don't really have to do anything other than, hey, go get me lots of records, and it just happens for you automatically. So, you know, uh, instead of working with just 256, you know, Dynamics is another big one. You say list all accounts yeah. with some filter, and you are limited to only that set. Now you just say, you know what, I want is, uh, you know, at least 10,000. If there's 10,000, we'll just go keep asking Dynamics for more and more and more and send them back to you as a whole. So just on that point, you said at least 10,000. What that means is that we'll get we'll get up to the page that hits that limit of mm. the number that you provide. So if you have, say, 10,000, but the page limit's not an even you know value of 10,000, you may get 10,010 or yep. something. That's right. So you do have to plan for that if you really yeah. want just 10,000. But then you can use top, and then that'll cut that off. So that'll, that combination will help if you want more precise values. Expression authoring. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. So yeah, he seems surprised because like, oh yeah, that we did that a while ago. Because yeah. two months. It's interesting too if you were at Integrate, a lot of this you already saw too. So it's like, oh, I feel like we've told everyone this, but not everyone. Not everybody. So expression or things. So now, just as in your token picker, you get to actually have a tab where you can build out an expression. So now all of our expressions, our expression functions, are listed in the designer. You don't have to go to documentation anymore to find those expressions. That's oh, gonna be super powerful. Yep. Smart tips. So, you know, have you ever written a logic app where you had a request endpoint and you sent it some JSON, you try to, to get a, with a schema, you try to get a token out of it and then it failed and you spent 10 minutes trying to figure stuff out and then you send us an email and it's like, oh, you forgot to send the, set the content type to application JSON. Um, well, we want to help you out so that you don't have to send us an email. <laughs> uh, so we put smart tips. So there are certain places where we add smart tips to give you hints. It's like, hey, by the way, don't forget to set your your uh, uh, content type to, to application JSON. We have a number of these smart tips uh, throughout your logic apps. For example, if you use a peak lock, you know, we, we remind you to go ahead and uh, release that at the end of your logic app. And we'll be adding more smart tips uh, going forward too. Excellent, bomb. Yeah. So this is. Uh... Uh, I guess a minor uh, annoyance that we've cleaned up. So today, when you use the transform action, what you get back, you get the um, the encoded XML, and on that, you get a byte order mark. So you probably don't want that. So we now make it possible for you to not get that back to make it easier to then process that XML downstream in the logic app. So just a sort of a minor uh, improvement that just makes your guys' lives easier. Yeah, it saves you from writing some weirdly complex expressions. To yeah, pull it exactly. Out some stuff, string right? uh, manipulation or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Although that's easier now with the expression authoring, right? But yes. If you do want to do that, we've made that even easier for you. Sweet. Okay. Open source yeah. templates. So now you guys can actually submit new or update one of our templates. Um, so uh, we'll have uh, 
we'll share our, our the, the GitHub, but you can actually go ahead and uh, submit templates and we'll review them and add them to our template store. Yep. And then you can see them, you know, everybody's templates will be seen in that in that initial experience where you say templates, you'll see the list of templates that will just come up. That's right. It is github.com slash Azure slash Logic Apps. There you go. Then you will see all of our templates. We also have a white paper that's there. Uh, we have a few other goodies that we'll keep dropping in that. So uh, be sure to check that one out. To be known, it is not the same as github.com slash Logic Apps IO, uh, which was our repo we used for a long time. We're kind of moving over to the, the Microsoft family of massive repositories. So github.com slash Azure slash Logic Apps. Easy enough. Thank you. And last but not oops, that was last but not least. And so, that was <laughs> so I, that's but great. Oh, go connectors. ahead. So that was those are new functionality. Yes, what's new? Yes, and yes. we're and we're but gonna we have connectors. Oh, that's right, new connectors. Before yes. I get to show off anything, let's go through these connectors. Let's then. go to the connectors. We have a lot of connectors. Azure file storage. Now you get to access your 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 um, blob attached uh, storage from to your VM. And we we treat that just like a like the file connector, so you can go ahead and party on your Azure files. ARM invoke and service principle. So so uh, Jeff talked about the service principle support. Um, now we also so that's that's an uh, update in the ARM connector. But the invoke invoke is super powerful. So now you can you know for any Azure resource that you have access to, uh, you can you can do things like start and stop my VM, right? So these are all the ex uh, things that you can execute against an ARM resource. Um, what's another example of a uh, invoke? Uh, get secrets, get some callback URLs, pretty much anything you can do on a resource where you click a button, you can now do it in the Logic app. Super powerful. App Insights. So the Application Insights Connector allows you to do things like um, queue up reports and, and run long, long running queries so that you can get uh, App Insights reports out. Video indexer. We have a nice um, blog on the video indexer. Yeah, there was a blog that just got posted. This is pretty cool. Uh, one of the new cognitive services. Uh, you take any video, like this webcast, which we should create this automated workflow. Yeah, Maybe I'll do it after easy. this. Yeah. Uh, you say, you know, whenever a video gets uploaded to something like Blob or OneDrive, you push it to this connector via reference or the content itself. It will go through. It will grab all the text out of the video, do facial recognition for all the speakers, get sentiment. Uh, create captions for you automatically. It's just kind of like out of the box amazingness um, that now there's a connector for. So if you're working with any video files, you can just add that intelligence in as a simple step. So pretty cool stuff, honestly. We should do that and then caption all of our webcasts. Yeah. yeah. Get the sentiment of our text, whatever else we video do. And our, I think it looks at your face emotions too. It does oh, everything. Really? That's scary. Yeah. You have to sit here smiling the whole <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. What's next? Okay. Planner. Uh, so this is a Microsoft Planner, Microsoft Teams. Oh uh, yeah, that was Teams a nice connector, one to add. Microsoft Forms. So now you can do uh, surveys and tests. Education uses this a lot as well. Uh, Bing Maps and Bing Search. Oh, and then this kind of just went on. So that's all of our Azure stuff. And then we have a whole bunch of others. So we've been busy the last two months. That's a bunch of new connectors. Yep. Um, and we're going to have more. Yep. But before we go on to what's new and what's coming next with connectors, we're going to go on to a demo. Yes. So I'm just going to very quickly show you some of the new functionality in the designer, uh, just to give you a walking tour of some of what Kevin showed. Uh, so I have here a fairly simple logic app. It's triggering whenever something gets dropped inside of a queue. And I'm using the peak lock pattern, so I have to have a complete later on. And then I'm just creating an incident inside of Dynamics. I'm sending an email to whoever's on call. That's it. But what I wanted to call out here is a few things. I think we've shown parallel before. So I can add a parallel step very easily. Some of the stuff we haven't shown before, though, is you'll notice my add a dead letter message in a queue has a red arrow next to it. It's kind of like a reddish, orange, ambery thing. Uh, but uh, burgundy. burgundy, thank yeah. you, it is, yeah. Uh, but that's saying that this is a uh, message that's running with a different run after configuration. So I can actually come in here to any action and I can say configure when this step runs, under what conditions. And by default, whenever you add new steps, it's saying you know run this if the previous step is successful. But you'll notice here I'm actually able to say, hey, if the scope fails, that's when I want to dead letter something. 
So this is a really easy way in the designer that I can do thing like exception handling, where if an exception happened inside of the scope, it's going to run this action or any actions that I add after it. Uh, so that's one that's worth calling out. Another one, I have this approval step. I can actually open up all these settings that Kevin talked about before. I can set things like the retry policy, which is you know what happens if there's an intermittent failure, should we retry the request? I can also specify a timeout. This is really useful for approval scenarios or things that require something long running. Because in this case, I've said, you know what, actually only wait for an hour for someone to approve this. And if they don't approve it, then go ahead and time it out. And you'll notice here is my next step. I have an escalate action. Uh, and here on the run after, I say, you know, run this escalation if the approval times out. So just a quick overview uh, of that new settings option as well as the run after, some of the use cases that it's used for to do exception handling, escalation, timeout handling, all that stuff. Uh, this is really useful features that have been possible for a long time inside of code view, but are now much more accessible within the designer. We're continuing to add more onto these. Uh, one more I'll call out like for this uh, queue trigger, I can actually specify this is a single instance workflow which means only process one queue message at a time. Don't do anything in parallel. I can do something similar with for each loops. We're also going to be adding tracked properties, a uh, bunch of stuff that you'll see light up in these settings. So that was it, honestly. Just kind of a, a nice uh, showing people how to use some of this stuff. And I will go ahead and switch back to us. Yeah. Hey. And then you can switch back to what's coming next. OK. Great. From there. In progress. So some of the stuff that we're working on, large files. So uh, one of the things that we're, we're going to be enabling is the ability for you to uh, move uh, large files, which means uh, when we release 50, this 50 megabytes? 50 megabytes. What? <laughs> no. That's ginormous. Oh, my gosh. What was, I'm trying to think. When I was a kid, the first computer I remember owning Oh, uh, it had, no, well, for it. me, the first one I remember, <laughs> that's true. Old. We can remember further. Uh, yes. You could. I, I want to say it was 512 megabytes was the hard wow. drive. Uh, but I do remember in high school, mine was nine gigabytes. And I was like, I'll never fill this thing up. And now that seems like you can't even install a, can't even get a video with nine gig. Anyway. You, ever, you obviously never use a ton of Sinclair. No, yeah. see, this is all, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> What was or the quote from Bill Gates or whatever, <laughs> where he, he said, like, no one will ever need more than 8KB? Yeah. No, that was the PDP-8, right? Sure. Where you, you can't write new code because it doesn't fit in memory. Anyway, so anyway. Large Files is actually being able to, to move between uh, some of our connectors up to one gigabyte. One gigabyte, messages, which is messages. huge. That's very so, big. Uh, it'll come out initially for Blob and FTP. Yep. Um, so in this in this large file scenario, you can, you can move the data. Um, but you still can't access the data within it. So that's the idea mm -hmm. of, of being able to uh, like have a claim check scenario. You can move those things around, but not actually access the data. Yep. It still has to be less than 100 meg to be able to go fiddle with the data in it. Correct. And it'd be yeah. great to know, too, this is we have to implement kind of like this chunking and streaming pattern with the connector to push that much data in subsequent requests. But if there's connectors where you want to be able to use, uh, the standard limit for most connectors now is 100 megabytes. Uh, but if you have connectors where you're like, hey, I'm going to have a gig coming out of something that's not Blob or FTP, let us know, and we'll uh, queue it up on the backlog to support the pattern. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, to, to Kevin's point, it's like the the reason we kind of prioritize the ones that we have, and you know, there's more coming, is is really the file based ones, right? That these are the ones that you mm -hmm. typically have, you know, large amounts of data, then you don't really want to do anything with it. You just want to get it from A to B, and maybe there's some contextual information that follows that, that you'll use it. for yeah. routing decisions or something else. But you're really just trying to get this data around the place without having to kind of uh, do any kind of gymnastics and kind of clean check type stuff that you have to do today to just make that easier. I mean, we likely won't support one gig for Twitter. No, probably not. Yeah. So anyone, <laughs> anyone needs that, then send us uh, offline mail. Let us know. We'll yeah. talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Why? OK. You're up, Kevin. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, you're on. Yeah, sorry. So, so, so this is a big this? one. Yeah, John, let us know. Yeah, this so, is a big uh, one. This is pretty cool. So uh, this is, I think, our biggest ask on user voice, yep. right? Yes, yep. uh, it is. A lot of are. you are uh, very interested in us providing kind of native support for SOAP. Um, so we're working on this right now and figuring this out. So I, um, I'm not quite sure when it's going to land. We'll but it's actually in progress. Like but we are working thing. on it, yes. yeah. So 
Uh, the intention is you'll be able to consume SOAP services, uh, regardless of whether they reside in the cloud or on-premises is our, is our target. Um, and, you know, that, I think that's probably all I can say right now, um, other than it's coming soon. Um, we're just not sure exactly when it's going to land, but, you know, soon. Mm. So, yeah. In progress, really. In yeah, progress. yeah, really in progress. We have people yeah. working on it right now while we're sitting here talking to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they're called devs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, expression IntelliSense. Ah, this is a big yeah. one. Yeah. I so. saw this one uh, live yesterday. Uh, so, it's, so it's got some kinks, but if you start writing an expression, especially in like that new expression editor, uh, we'll do, it's the same, I mean, cat's out of the bag, but it is the same IntelliSense that Visual Studio Code is using. So if you've used Visual Studio Code with something like TypeScript, and you know how it does like the autocomplete, the standard, whatever, it, it pops up, it gives you a little description, gives you some text, lets you know what the parameters are. That's exactly what we'll be having for our workflow definition expressions like, you know, whatever, string replace and UTC now and all that stuff. So this is a big one. It's very cool. So we're working on it right now. Yep. Expression tracing. So once you have those expressions, when you go to Monview, you want to be able to see what the, uh, how those expressions evaluate it. So we actually build out a full tree for those expressions and you get to see the, all the intermediary values as they, they came up to that. For each nesting in the designer, mm -hmm. so we recently in the back end, we actually supported nesting for for each, but we didn't enable it in the designer yet. So we will be seeing that coming really yeah, soon. Yeah, we've had a few people ask us um, how to do this because I think we mentioned this a while ago, right? That it was possible to do it, but you can only do it in code view today. So yep. for those of you who don't like spending all your time in code view, yes. make this it's coming. You don't you don't speak JSON; it's a second <laughs> language. Yeah. Uh, for each failure navigation, uh, this one's so very close. You ever had you know five thousand mm. you know iterations in for each loop, but five of them failed, and you don't and know. Yeah, you see the red X, and you're like, "Well, crap! Like, now I need to know which one failed." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that will give you a Sad. shortcut, so you can just go to the failed ones. Yes, and uh, you get to see what happens. Yep, exactly that. You see any clapping in the back end? Uh, I don't know if they, they like the uh, IntelliSense one. Okay. Uh, and I think so. It's hard because there's a delay. Yeah. So I see positive uh, reactions right. in chat and I assume it's, uh, you know, whatever it lines up to. Functions plus swagger. So this is uh, working on now where uh, with like service discovery type stuff, if you have a function you've written and you have swagger for that function or open API, uh, we will actually honor and render that swagger in the designer. So you don't have to remember your inputs and outputs. You don't have to remember all that stuff. You just say, hey, this is looking for a name and an address. Here's the name and address. Uh, just improving that function experience. Yeah. Mm. Logic, Logic apps and OMS package. Yeah. So again, uh, we talked about this, um, I guess, a month ago and maybe even further back than that. The idea of being able to monitor all of your Logic apps. Today, we just have a B2B solution in uh, operations management suite to do this. Um, we're broadening that out. So any Logic app that you've got, you'll be able to see what's going on. Um, You're going to see a sneak peek? Shall I show that right now? Might we're okay. Easier. We're my, yeah. Shall I do that? How right? much yeah, is that? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I have we'll like come back. fifteen minutes left of my battery. So if so I do it now. great time we'll come to back show to right do now. Do you want more? Okay, yep. so this is a really raw um, sneak peek of what's going on. This is literally so it's uh, real. This is real. Yeah. So it actually yeah. works. And what what I've got here, and this is just one of the tiles. You know, we're working on. Uh, did it change? Oh, did it change from earlier? Yeah. One of the things um, that you'll notice is that I, I now you know don't see the kind of B two B protocol stuff. I just see all of my logic apps. So I have a list of logic apps, and I've got a few here, like the one that says always succeeding, and you can see that. Um, you know, I've got one running, but a whole bunch of them succeeded. I've got ones that are always failing and long running. So I can click in to one of these, and then I can see all the logic apps that I have, um, and I can see the status of these things and see information about them. Um, and we're adding a bunch of things around the UI for this to, to improve this as well right now in terms of the grid controls. But you see I can do things like filtering on this. Um, and one of the things we're doing is allowing date time filtering as well to make that easy to be able to kind of narrow things down so that you can find out what you know what the problem is very quickly and again provide support for track property so you can see all of that in here and filter by that stuff too. Um, but I just want to give you guys a sneak peek because this this is actually going to land before the next webcast unless we do another webcast in a couple of weeks time. Which I don't no, know yeah, it'll be it'll be like three or four weeks. So, so this is the, the first version of this. The the, the first uh, solution around this is going to come within the next month. So um, 
Do it. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Honestly, I'm excited what about you that. guys think about this when you get your hands on it. Yeah. Manage multiple logic apps. Do uh, I know later on we'll be doing things like bulk resubmit, which I know comes up yeah, very frequently. Right. Yeah. So uh, this will yeah, improve so a lot to of take stuff. action on this. You can do the downloading messages today. Obviously, that'll work across the board, but also resubmission in bulk and a bunch of other things as well is coming. Yeah. Yep. Are we switched? Uh, yes, you're up. OK, okay. next. Uh, we're going to continue working on variable support. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, append. So you can append things to an array in your variable. That'll come out soon. Publish logic app to Power Apps and Flow. Mm -hmm. Yep. So have you ever had a, you're working in a Power App and you want to be able to call logic app? There's a bunch of gymnastics you have to do to admit today to make that happen. We're going to make that super easy so you can go ahead and publish a logic app and it'll be discoverable by Power Apps and Flow. Yep. Export flow to logic app arm template. So that's not our feature. It's actually Flow's feature. But you know, if you're in Flow, you can uh, very soon be able to export uh, your logic app as a logic app arm template and then import it uh, in Visual Studio, deploy it, you know, whichever you want. And then you know, that's a, a great way to move if you're in Flow to logic apps. Yeah. And you know these two features are great, I think, because we know that you guys kind of span across everything. It's not just you're not just a Logic App user or a Flow user or a yep. Power Apps user. So reducing friction of going between these different kind of products and underneath that kind of sharing the templates definitions, so it makes it very easy to move from from one to the other or consume one from the other. Right, it's really the goal here. Yeah. Okay. Code view peak in action. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, this is pretty cool. When we got <laughs> yeah, this email with the proof of concept, so. Uh, I think one of the challenges is if you do have to go to code view for something, uh, right now you go to code view, you have to kind of find it and it's alphabetically listed. It's a pain, but similar to how in Visual Studio, you do like peek at the code uh, for a reference. In that dot, dot, dot menu, you can say peek at code view and the card just opens up that little portion of code view for the action. Uh, initially, you can just see it, but obviously very shortly afterwards, we'll want to make it so that you can just edit yeah, right in there. Well. Yep. Yeah. Cool. That'll be a good one. Hmm. That's a sexy feature. Time-based time batching, uh, yeah. So I talked about batching earlier. Uh, what we're working on right now, and again, this is going to land um, in the next couple of weeks, we think. Um, I mentioned count-based batching. So you know, every 10 items, every 100 items, it'll do the batch trigger, and you'll be able to uh, iterate over the array that you receive of those 10 items. Uh, we're adding time-based batching as well. So this will allow you to uh, essentially use similar functionality to recurrence to say, I just want to release that batch, like however many items are in that batch, mm. once a day at like midnight or whatever, or you know, every other Thursday, whatever you want to do. Do. Um, Every five minutes. Yeah, exactly. So you'll get more control over how you release those batches, not just on the uh, the amount of things in the batch. And will it let you mix and match uh, with the initial that's ones? The, so you could that's say the goal. Uh, yeah, that yeah. probably won't land in a couple of weeks. That'll be a little further out, maybe. Um, but yes, yeah, soon afterwards, you'll be able to combine these things together. You'll also be able to say uh, a timeout. So essentially, you'll say, I wanted to batch in tens, but if it's more than you know an hour apart, just give me what you've got in the batch, yep, right. right? So it doesn't hang around forever. So yep, yeah, and combinations cool. of these things will be possible. Yeah. So is that enough stuff? I think so. <laughs> no, I don't think it's enough stuff, because we have more. Connectors. Such a, such a <laughs> so we have, of course, we have yeah. connectors coming down the pipe. So we have Azure Tables coming down the pipe, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, ServiceNow, nice. Workday, Readly, cool. MySQL, Amazon Redshift. So we're we're never done with connectors. No, no. I'll just I'll just call out tables quickly because again that is going to land really soon. So in the next uh, two to three weeks, we think uh, we'll get the yeah. preview of that one out. Um, so yeah, again before the next web does. Fantastic. And we yeah. have even more secret ones, too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? He is teasing. <laughs> that was a tease. <laughs> OK, and okay. tons of uh, we, 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 we uh, opened with the, the uh, update of the New York hackathon in September. But there's actually tons of opportunities to get an experience working with uh, us and people on our team. Uh, this one's the Integration Boot Camp. Uh, this is run by, uh, if you're familiar, Mandy, who's phenomenal. She's out of Charlotte. Um, this is focused on BizTalk, Logic Apps, API management. Yeah, a whole bunch of things. I think Everything probably even more than that, right? Yep. Yeah. So you yeah, can so sign up and attend. It's a nice two-day 
hands-on. We've got some community sessions too. So some folks from the community will be giving some trainings. I went last year for the first time. It was awesome. It yeah, was actually great. really yeah. cool. It's a great event. And you know, the reason for calling out of here is that space is limited, right? So if you're interested mm. in this, then you know, keep an eye on this when the registration opens, which is really soon, should be next week. Um, to get hands-on experience is really what you get out of this versus just watching videos and reading documentation. There'll be guys from the product group like us there to help you guys out, and there'll be labs to run through and actually get you know your first logic app, your first you know bear management instance up and running, and understand the technologies hands-on, get questions answered there and then. Right? Yep, it's uh, it's a cool event. And, and just it's as, free, right? So and it's you know, free. So yes, that's another. And it's uh, coincidentally, or not actually coincidentally, on purpose. <laughs> it's actually yeah. just a couple of days before ignite. Before ignite, and yes. it's on the east coast, so it's yeah. not that big yeah. of a trip from North uh, Charlotte to yeah. Orlando yeah. if you're going to ignite. Which also means if you want to know if there's anything really cool we're going to announce at ignite, we'll mm. probably tell everyone <laughs> three days <laughs> yeah. early. So if you really <laughs> want the sneak peek yeah. of these secret connectors or whatever <laughs> else we're cooking up, it's a yeah. good place to show up. And uh, dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, I actually fixed these up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's our birthday. Integrate 2017. So we had a great integrate uh, in London uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, we've heard a lot of feedback that, oh, what about us in you know the other part of the world? So uh, we're going to host this again with the uh, BizTalk 360, Service Bus 360 guys on the Microsoft campus. Uh, here in Redmond uh, on the October 25th through the 27th. Yeah, we're really lucky to, to have this and to have the venue secured. So this is on campus, so Building 92, so right above the company store and the other things for those who've been here before. Probably yep. the best facility that we have available. This usually books out two years in advance, but we managed, we managed to snag this uh, for this event in October. So if you're US-based or- Because we're North that America cool based, and that important. Get keynote speakers too, right? Yeah, yeah, you never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. More teasers, come on, we gotta entice these guys. Yeah. yeah, so sign up for that. Uh, again, we'd love to see as many of you come as you can. And obviously, you're spending the week on campus here at Microsoft. So yeah, uh, it gives can, a uh, great chance to meet us, talk cool to us. You guys to drink while you're on site. Exactly <laughs> right. That is exactly right. Fun place to be. Yeah. All right, with that, we are uh, at time a little bit over. But I do want to answer a few questions for our patient viewers. So if you have questions, let us know. Uh, I did get a few on uh, Twitter ahead of time. So one was actually on the OMS dashboard, which you showed oh, and yeah. explained. The other one is a question we get often, which is, what is the story and is there any updates with Logic Apps talking to things behind a VNet or Express route? Mm -hmm. uh, do you, I can answer this and do you want me to answer it? We're, we're actively looking at it. I would say, yeah. <laughs> so it's a yeah. huge priority for us, honestly. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, how the hosting and all the magic behind the scenes work is it is not supported out of the box. We have a number of customers who are talking to on-premises resources via a VNet or Express route. Most often they use Azure API management as kind of the proxy and reverse proxy to sit in between those two sections. So Logic Apps talks to API management and API management. Yeah, if it's a if it's their own API, then they do that. And if it's yeah, like yeah. SQL or file, then they yeah. use the gateway. Uh, but we do, we have ongoing design discussions with the Azure networking team. We just met with them yesterday. They are un, like they're passionate about this too. We're just trying to figure out how do we unblock this and you know that we need to to do the work required so no updates on exactly when this will happen but it is right, like this is not that? something that we're like oh it just won't work we're trying to figure out how do we make this work and what's the soonest we can light it up for you uh so with that let me see if there's any other questions just lots of cheers people like to OMS integration um function and swagger people like no more writing json yeah uh, again we as much as i love json we don't want you to have to do it um yeah, uh, just events, and we will be doing uh, another thing that I believe uh, Microsoft may be starting up, and I I, I can't confirm or deny either way. Uh, but last year they had what were called tech summits, uh, where right. you know right. there were about like twelve or twenty around the globe. Uh, these little events. If they're doing that again this year, I, I, they haven't publicly announced anything, so I'm not spoiling anything. I actually don't know. Um, but usually we get to go to a few of those as well. So if yeah. you want to spend some time and meet with us, and again. Even if we're not traveling, they have this amazing Microsoft technology called Ske Skeep? Skeep? Skype? 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 Oh, Skype. Skype. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and That's we will, Swedish. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll jump on a call uh, and we're happy to chat with you wherever you are. 
obviously we can't do like a full two day workshop, like what we get to do in New York and in Charlotte, but nonetheless, uh, happy to help answer questions wherever we can. Uh, and if you need to get, oh, actually, so one more question, which is if you want to skip or bypass an action, uh, any updates yeah, on that? Yeah, so yeah. yes, we're actually very, very close to starting work on a feature that would let you uh, kind of turn off an action for like testing or debugging and then give it like some mock response potentially too. So you could be like, skip this action yeah. or simulate an error or simulate this. Uh, we're calling it mocking, uh, but it's like, it does the same thing as skipping. Haven't have it yet got it underway, but we have it all designed and spec'd out. Uh, it's just a matter of prioritization. Uh, but yes, that should be coming soon. Um, would VNet option also be a way to enable connect to on-premises data gateway? Uh, I don't know if the, I mean, they both connect on-premises. So yeah, you, you could choose one or the other. Um, but I guess the other potential way is you could have a, virtual machine in your VNet yes. that has the on-premises data gateway on it, yeah. and now you have access to that VNet via the on-premises data yep. gateway with the caveat that today the gateway only supports some of our connectors and not just any endpoint. Yeah. Okay, good questions. Um, okay, so with that, I think that's all the questions. Kevin, I think you have a closing slide just with uh, how to get yeah, in contact with out. us. Yep. Yeah, our blog. We have a few things coming, so there will be a blog posted on Azure blog this week, and I think there's a video that we did with the Microsoft Mechanics team on Logic Apps and Serverless. So be sure to check that out too. Go like that video, let them know that you love serverless stuff like Logic Apps and Functions. Uh, send us an email. Again, if you're interested in any of these events, uh, either if we had a link for it, let us know. Uh, and as well, if there's things that you want us to work on, or if you just have general feedback on the product, we are a year old today. We're in our toddler years, so we're we're, uh, we're a little bit more independent, but still a little bit fussy. Uh, so if you want us to work on something or shore something up, shout at us, let us know, and we'll have where we can. We could run before we were one. That's right. I know. <laughs> Honestly, we, we, uh, we're we, we were running. OK, so that's it. So thanks, everyone, for joining. It was a long webcast, but it's because we had to cram in you know two and a half months worth of updates. Yeah. Um, so we might index this and just let you skim the transcript if you're watching the recording. But if you've made it to the end, you made it. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We'll see you again next month. Bye, and, guys. Uh, talk Thanks. to you later.